All right, what is going on, ladies and gents? Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you a fantastic new Earth Nuke video today, folks. Boom, there comes the dynamite. This uh, build is probably my favorite build to play so far. It's a mixture of the great staff of the Crone, Storm, Werewolf build, combined with the Earth, uh, Earth and Bulwark massive nuke. Drop people right in their face, pew, pew, pew. It's almost an invincible build. Uh, I was clearing clearing nightmare dungeons about 20 to 25 levels above me at the peak here and I'm still continuing to optimize the gear. I do not have all the aspects that I need to make this build really shine but I've got enough to do what I need to do to make this fantastic video and in another week here when this build is fully perfected uh, all the gear is min maxed I will absolutely do an update video to show you guys where we've gone from here. Um, so in just a second, we're going to jump over and take a look at the skills and the aspects and the fantastic Paragon board, so get excited for that. Oh my gosh, look at the damage, ladies and gentlemen. Millions and millions of damage. I think the biggest hit that I had uh, in this run was 5.9 million, so not too bad. Here we go into the skills. All right, folks, let's talk real quick about the legendary aspects, the abilities, and the Paragon Tree for this build. Get excited. Here we go. We'll keep it super short and sweet. Now, the way the build works, there's really a few driving philosophies that you absolutely must adhere to, okay? The first is Earthen Bulwark is going to be exploding every three seconds or quicker if you take too much damage. Therefore, you want to make sure you get this 16-second Earthen Bulwark cooldown down below three seconds, all right? Do not activate it while you have a current bulwark shield up or it will not explode. It will just refresh the barrier. Um, but as soon as it explodes, it will deal enormous AoE damage in a close circle around you, which is going to be great. You want to be able to activate it right away to make sure that you have that survivability and the damage going nonstop. That is the most important part of this build. Activate Earth and Bulwark. The next most important part of the build is going to be Poison Creeper. You absolutely want to be resetting this all the time, okay? Because this is going to be an enormous, enormous benefit. Poison Creeper is going to apply poison to everybody around you. It deals decent damage by itself for trash clearing, but really what you want is to apply 20% um, critical strike chance to everybody, in addition to, through the skills and abilities here, um, through the... Neurotoxin tree, right, with Toxic Claws and in Venom, you will be giving yourself bonus critical strike chance, sorry, bonus critical strike damage and a slow to enemies who are crowd controlled and poisoned, all right? So Poison Creeper will be slowing all the enemies, applying 30% increased critical strike damage received to the enemies and dealing decent damage and immobilizing them anyways, which is going to activate all kinds of bonuses. So Poison Creeper must be applied nonstop. Earthen Bulwark must be activated every time it explodes, either at 3 seconds or before 3 seconds if you take too much damage. All right. Everything else about this build is completely noise. So, how do we get the Earthen Bulwark cooldown down and the Poison Creeper cooldown down? That is through your legendary aspects. The necklace here, okay, and this is not a perfect roll. I am going to definitely optimize, like I said, three or four pieces of gear on, on me right now need significant improvement, but I've made this build work with enemies 25 levels above me, as is, which is great. Okay, so Nature's Fury key passive, right? This is going to reduce the cooldown of my um, abilities. So when I kill things with a Storm skill, it's going to activate an Earth skill. When the Earth skill is activated, it will reduce all my Earth cooldowns by 9 seconds, okay? Up to a maximum of 12. So... You can clearly see that all I need to do is trigger that um, once or twice within, you know, the three second duration here. If I trigger it once and I have three seconds, I'm going to remove a total of 12 seconds off of this cooldown. I'll still have four seconds to go. So really you want to be able to activate that twice within your Earthen Bulwark cooldown, if not more. And quicker is better because there have been instances where I've been taking so much like damage over time from fire and poison and exploding things that you're activating Earthen Bulwark every second. Okay, so you definitely want to be able to get your cooldown down to zero. Now, the way that we can really abuse this legendary aspect is through the Great Staff of the Crone. Great Staff of the Crone is going to turn your claw into a storm skill. Great Staff of the Crone is also going to give you a, uh, the ability to use Storm Strike at the exact same time as Claw. So now your basic attacks will actually be applying two Storm Skills, all right, which means you now have two 30% chances to trigger through your key passive here, right? You will have two 30% chances to trigger 
the Nature's Fury cooldown, which will reduce your cooldown on Earthen Bulwark by 9 to 12 seconds. Okay? So, those are the two main drivers for getting this build down. In addition to that, there is a Spirit Boon over here under the Wolf Tree called Pack Leader. Pack Leader will reset the cooldown on your companion skills when you get a critical, uh, critical Strike chance. Well, guess what? When you're attacking with Great Staff of the Crone, you now have two basic attacks every time you do one auto attack. Okay, One of the basic attacks will chain attack three enemies at once, so you essentially have four chances to reset your companion skill every time you attack with a basic attack. In addition to all the critical strike damages that you will be dealing with Earthen Bulwark and Hurricane, all right, you should be resetting your Poison Creeper every two or three seconds, not a problem when you're in combat. Okay, so. You'll be running into a bunch of enemies, popping Orphan Brawl Work, immediately popping Poison Creeper. You'll be applying bonus um, poison, um, bonus critical strike chance against them. You'll be resetting that right away. You'll be resetting Earthen Bull Work right away. And that's what makes the build tick and talk, okay? So, like I said, everything else is noise. All these other legendary aspects and abilities I'm going to talk about here today are completely noise. They are all going to incrementally increase your damage output and survivability, all right? But if you have Great Staff of the Crone, and you have any item, doesn't have to be an amulet, you have any item with a decent roll on this Nature's Fury key passive, you can make this build work for you, okay? You can probably not push Nightmare Dungeons 25, 30 levels above you without optimizing additional aspects, but with those two items alone, one unique and one legendary aspect, you can run this build now. All right? So... Let's talk about the other things that are optimizing and increasing the damage and survivability of this build. First off, I am running, even though I'm using a werewolf form most of the time, I am running Vasily's Prayer. This is going to cause my, um, um, my Earthen Bulwark to be a werebear skill, okay? It is also going to give me an enormous amount of damage while shapeshifted. It's going to give me overpower damage in life. I love all three of those. Those are amazing. You can run a version of this build where you simply have a regular helmet on that has a barrier aspect, okay? I mean a, a barrier roll, sorry. So, um, I've actually tested that. I have a helmet that I've been running. I've been switching back and forth between the wear bear version of this build and the helmet version of this build where it's non-unique, okay? They are com um, competitive. They are definitely competitive. I happen to like the wear bear version just a little bit more but you can run a regular helmet that has another survivability aspect on it, okay? For the chest, I love this chest because it gives me physical damage, which is gonna help my earthen bow work. It gives me werebear skill damage, which is gonna help my earthen bow work and it jives with the helmet, okay? And then I have total armor to increase my tankiness and I have barrier generation on here, which you absolutely wanna have on your chest. You can only put barrier on your chest, on your helmet, your amulet, and your rings, and your offhand. We're not using an offhand in this build, so you only have five places to put on barrier. Now, Earthen Bulwark is only modified by barrier bonuses, okay? So if you have all five of those pieces of gear with no barrier on them, your damage will take a massive hit, all right? Right now, I only have two items with barrier on it. I have one chest and I have one ring. I would like to have um, chest, ring, ring, and amulet all with barrier. It'll dramatically increase my damage. I'm working to optimize that. Come back in two days, maybe I'll have those pieces put together. Okay? Uh, but yeah, sorry. The aspect of the cyclone armor is going to give you great survivability. It's also going to benefit your team members if you're running in a group. This is great to have on your chest. Okay? Gloves. These gloves are not optimized. However, it is a good idea to have basic attack speed on your gloves in addition to the aspect that gives additional attack speed for your basic skills. It's also not bad to have basic attack speed on your helmet. Okay, but um, th these gloves give me almost 40% attack speed to my Great Staff of the Crone basic attacks. I'm applying two basic attacks per hit. So essentially we have an enormous amount of <laughs> damage coming out from Great Staff of the Crone. Okay. Now, don't be fooled. Claw and the Storm Strike combination actually will be dealing a lot of damage. This is going to be a fantastic amount of damage. It'll easily clear through trash 25 levels above you with just auto attacking, okay? And you can really use Earth and Bulwark to nuke down all the elites and high HP monsters. But Great Staff with the Crone alone, with all this bonus attack speed and doing double hits, is going to be huge damage by itself. 
All right, um, for the legs, I love these legs, okay? Um, I would like to have reduced damage while injured on my legs. I'm going to optimize this at some point when I get a better leg, but right now this is pretty solid. But essentially the aspect that reduces the damage you take after a basic attack is a big deal. Um, since you're doing two basic attacks, just drop the basic attack every six seconds. You'll be spamming it nonstop anyways. And you'll get both Storm Strikes 25% damage reduction and this aspect for an additional 20%. That is 45% reduced damage received just by auto attacking. Okay? Boots! This is a must have. Cannot stress this enough. Two things here. One, you must have um, the legendary aspect that makes you unstoppable. It is absolutely imperative for this build. It's an enormous quality of life. Key point for this build. I also happen to like having bonus max evade charges. Um, and the damage reduction while injured, that is very, very important to this build. Remember, you, your main damage is going to happen either after three seconds when Earth and Bulwark expires, or when you take so much damage, it chews right through your 45% base life barrier and plumps, uh, um, sorry, pumps right into your HP pool. So you will spend a lot of time in this fight when your Earth and Bulwark is getting blown up before the three seconds, you'll spend a lot of time <laughs> below half health and a lot of time in the injured territory. So having damage reduction while injured, very important. Please put that on your boots. Okay? All right. Uh, great stuff with the Chrome we already talked about. It is absolutely key for this build. And I have tried a version of this build without great stuff with the Chrome. Can you work it? Yes. Do you end up having gaps where you don't have your cooldown off of Earth and Bulwark? Yes, okay? So, technically you could run this build even without it, but it's gonna have gaps in your Earth and Bulwark. It's not gonna be as efficient. You have much lower damage and survivability. I really don't recommend it. For the amulet, um, having this cooldown reduction on your amulet is a big deal. I also am a fan. I actually have this cooldown reduction on my helmet, uh, my other helmet, and I have a more damage-oriented amulet as well for the alternate version of the build I was testing. However, having the cooldown reduction on your amulet will give you the maximum amount of cooldown reduction, really cementing uh, your ability to spam Earth and Bulwark as you get to the higher level arenas, okay? This is a fantastic legendary aspect. Oh, I didn't talk about the amulet, sorry. So the amulet here, you can see it has overpowered damage with werebear skills, okay? I'm using this amulet for a very specific reason because I'm using the werebear helmet. When I take off the werebear helmet, I switch out the chest and I switch out the amulet and I get a different version of this build that is not based on werebear overpower. Since I am overpowering every 20 kills through obsidian slam, uh, you definitely want to have all this werebear overpower damage here because your only skill in your bar that's earthen is earthen bulwark, okay? And then it is a bear skill, so now it's going to overpower at the werebear bonus damage level. You'll see enormous overpower hits um, every third or fourth uh, Earth and Bulwark, based on the amount of kills you're getting, you'll see a ton of damage from that, okay? But, I would love to get rid of Crushing Earth. I, so, let me rephrase this. The best version <laughs> of this amulet is probably Werebear Overpower Damage. Um, um, crushing Earth is a amazing, it is an amazing skill. There's also a few other skills you can have, but Crushing Earth is going to increase the damage to the Earth damage to enemies who are crowd controlled, which is all the enemies, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, I'd probably roll that strength off on an optimized amulet here. I'd probably get rid of that strength and put on some sort of benefit for my critical strike damage or criti critical strike chance. Um, but essentially, this is a pretty strong amulet and then um, the damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned you'd want to put that as barrier right you can get barrier on your amulet it's absolutely what you want those are probably the four main keep um, the four main traits I'd have on my uh, legendary amulet right barrier crushing earth is great um, but you definitely want barrier you want the overpowered wear bear if you're using the wear bear helmet if you're not using this helmet you don't need the wear bear overpower damage because it's no longer a bear skill okay Onto the rings. I love both of these ring bonuses um, in another version of the build where your cooldown is on another item. You could put either one of these ring bonuses aspects onto the amulet to get bonus damage, but essentially both of these are quality of life damage improvements. You can run the build without them, but both of these aspects are just pure damage adds, okay? So, um, on the rings, you definitely want to see critical strike chance. 
critical strike damage. You want to see barrier. This ring has injured. I do not care about injured. I wish I could take it off. When I get this build optimized, I get a better ring. It will not have injured on it, okay? It will have critical strike damage to earth skills, all right? Or critical strike chance to injured. One of those two different things. Um, but the critical strike damage to earth skills would be even better. This next ring here has exactly what I just said. This ring has critical strike chance, critical strike damage, vulnerable damage, critical strike damage with earth skills. The only upgrade for this particular ring that I'm running right now would be if one of the critical strike damages was actually a barrier to give me more base barrier nuke damage. Okay, so eventually I may try to roll off that critical strike damage. Um, I need a lot more mats. I'm kind of low on <laughs> field, field crystals. Okay, so those are the aspects. Bonus earth damage to crowd control. Bonus, bonus earth damage after using a storm skill. Bonus critical strike after using an earth skill. So your storm skills will have, you know, up to 12% bonus critical strike the entire fight. Your earth, your earth skills will be dealing, you know, up to 45% bonus, uh, bonus critical strike damage just from this one aspect. Another 40% critical strike damage from this. Um, just pure damage adds. Those are the aspects, guys. That's really it. There is two other aspects you could somehow put onto your gear here. If you, can, if you end up not using the Were Bear Unique... Um, and you decide to switch around some of these defensive cooldowns, you could get rid of Cyclone Armor. It's a nice-to-have, not a must-have. Um, but you can get the um, bonus damage to your skills based on your resource level, okay? I think is a 20% max roll. Um, and if you put it on an amulet, it's 30%. But basically, you never use Spirit in this build, so you get that bonus all the time, pure damage add. There's also a bonus damage while um, you have a barrier. That I haven't tested yet. I don't know how that affects your Earthen Bulwark explosion, because I guess at that point you don't have a barrier. I don't know if it I don't know if that affects it or not, but that's something to test, okay? So those two bonuses are things that I would like to test in the future, but for now, this is where we're at. Alright? Those are the skills. Let's talk I mean those are the aspects. Let's talk real quick about the spirit boons. Alright. Um, reduce damage from elites. Critical strike damage, you could also put attack speed, but I like critical strike damage because I have so much attack speed on my gloves. 40% is good to go. Okay, um, pack leader is going to be the the actual skill that resets your companion skills. This is a must-have. Okay, obsidian slam, this is a massive damage increase. This is a must-have. Overload is also not bad on this build because you are doing two storm attacks per auto attack and you're critting non-stop, right? So, just dealing lightning damage, you'll have a chance to do a static discharge. It's not a bad idea. It's not a huge amount of damage. It does help. Um, and then Masochistic. This is going to give you healing uh, when you get a critical strike with your shape-shifting skills. Right? You are using um, Claw and we're using Earth and Bulwark, both of which are now shape-shifting skills. Therefore, you'll be getting a lot of critical strikes with those giving you healing. I like to have this. You may decide that you don't need it because, honestly, we're spamming Blood Howl so much every couple seconds. You may decide that Masochist is, is not needed and you'd rather pick up Overload for more damage. It's really up to you. Okay. Into the abilities. We'll go through this super quick and then talk about the Paragon Tree. Okay. So, one point in Storm Strike, go up and get Fear Storm. One point in Claw, go up and get Wild Claw. Now you're getting all this bonus attack damage, the chance to attack twice. You're immobilizing the enemies and you are causing them to be vulnerable. Okay, big part of this build. Then we're going to go down here and grab Critical Strike Chance and Predatory Instincts. You're going to go ahead and grab digi uh, digi to grade Gate for bonus speed. Earth and Bulwark, okay? Obviously, Innate Earth and Bulwark is the main damage dealer of this build. You must have it. It's mandatory. From there, we're going to get Cyclone Armor. We're going to get Innate Cyclone Armor. Um, so ba basically, when you activate Earth and Bulwark, you actually have a 30% chance to activate your Cyclone Armor as well. You'll see it all the time. When you hit Earth and Bulwark, it'll knock them back. Um, I don't like that it knocks them back, so you might as well make the most out of it and apply Vulnerable, vulnerable to them for three seconds when it does activate, which is very often. Like, right? Like one out of three Earth and Bulwarks will trigger your Cyclone Armor statistically. Okay? So being able to apply Vulnerable for three seconds will kind of make up for the less AoE damage you're dealing. You could also use Preserving Cyclone Armor, but you're really not taking, you know, my survivability has not been in question um, fighting enemies 25, 30 levels above me, okay? 
Blood Howl was a big deal. Get bonus attack speed. Activate all your cooldowns. Get more damage output. Pew pew. Okay? Uh, make sure you get three points in Vigilance, because now we are running Earth and Bulwark non-stop. This will be up 100% uh, uptime for your Vigilance with reduced damage taken. Poison Creeper. Key part of the build. Must get it. Must get Enhanced Poison Creeper. Must get Brutal Poison Creeper for bonus critical strike chance. Okay? From there, down into the Wrath Tree, guys. We're going to get one point in Hurricane. We're going to branch out to the Savage Hurricane Tree to deal, uh, uh, reduce the amount of damage you're taking from the enemies. You could also get Natural Hurricane for Vulnerability if you're finding that your survivability is not an issue. I am already dealing Vulnerable from um, Cyclone Armor and from my Storm Strike attacks and from one of the Glyphs that I'll show you in my Paragon Tree in a minute. So I haven't found a need for Natural Hurricane to do it. I'd rather just reduce the damage I'm taking. Um, Crushing Earth is important for this build. You are dealing a ton of damage to enemies who are crowd controlled nonstop. Every single one is who you're attacking. You are applying poison and a slow to. So um, this is up all the time, okay? Stone Guard, this is another great quality of life. Your fortification is going to be maxed out all the time because you are spamming defensive skills. Therefore, this is going to be a permanent uptime for this damage bonus. Neurotoxin. Toxic Claws, and then Max Out in Venom to give yourself bonus critical strike chance, plus an additional slow when enemies are poisoned. Okay. Into the Ultimate Tree, we're not going to get any Ultimates here, but we will get Quick Shift. This is going to dramatically reduce the damage I take because you're shifting back and forth. Uh, sorry, this is gonna, <laughs> this is going to dramatically increase the damage you deal because every time you pop Earthen Bulwark, you're shape-shifting to pop Earthen Bulwark. This is the damage add. Heightened Senses, since you, again, you're switching back and forth between Werewolf and Werebear non-stop, you will have this Heightened Senses uptime all the time, reducing the damage you take. So 12% damage reduction here, 15% damage reduction from defensive skills. Um, essentially, every time you pop Earth and Bulwark, you will be gaining both of those immediately for a total of 27% damage mitigation. It's pretty nice. All right. And then Nature's Fury, this is mandatory for the build. You must have this to be able to reset your cooldowns fast enough to make this build work, okay? If you find a way to get your Earth and Bulwark down below a two-second cooldown without Nature's Fury, please tell me about it, and I'll absolutely try it out. But until then, this is mandatory. Paragon Tree, we'll keep this super-duper short. It's very open to interpretation, all right? I've kind of played with two or three different versions of this, and this is what I landed on. So... Make sure you get the Rare Node for Prime and Impel to give yourself 40% bonus damage and more uh, willpower. For the Glyph Socket, on the first Glyph Socket, I put in the Guzzler, so when I'm healthy, I deal bonus damage, okay? And I'm healthy for a lot of the fight. But you could take this off because when Earth and Bulwark does pop due to over excessive damage received, you end up in the injured territory. So you could replace that with... Um, um, tracker to deal bonus damage to enemies who are poisoned. You know, there's a few other things you can do in here. Um, not the core skills, but there's a few other things you can do here to increase your damage output that isn't based on health. However, I do happen to like this for now, so I'm going to keep it, okay? Uh, we're going to go up here into the next tree. This is going to be the Constricting Tendrils um, tree here, the Constricting Tendrils Paragon board. I don't remember the name of the board, but it is going to have the legendary node Constricting Tendrils. This is a big deal. This is going to cause my nature skills to have a chance to entangle the enemy, which is going to immobilize them and poison them for 120% of the base damage dealt over 4 seconds. So, if I hit a huge nuke with Earthen Bulwark and I don't, I somehow don't kill the enemy, I have a 15% chance to immobilize them and poison them for 4 seconds and deal enormous amount of damage. This is a big deal for this build. It adds a ton of crowd control. It adds a nice amount of damage. It just adds quality of life, poison output, okay? I happen to enjoy it a lot. But you're going to make sure that your glyph socket is in the bottom right-hand corner of that build, okay? You're going to go ahead and put in the werewolf form glyph into this area because you get a ton of willpower. You don't, have to, you don't have to fight for it. Just by walking through this glyph section and getting up to the next board, you will have 50 willpower for the build, okay? This is going to dramatically increase the damage I take while in werewolf form. Even though I spawn Earth and Bulwark, uh, and it puts me in the bear form, when I transform back into werewolf form, the overall um, damage output actually goes up. Okay? It increases my damage for all skills while I'm in werewolf form. Courage. You definitely want this rare node. Great bonus damage here. 
Okay, more willpower. Uh, nature's will, you want this node, great bonus damage, great willpower. Okay. Go ahead and come up as you are getting that ultimate node. Go ahead and grab Devastation for more bonus damage to Nature Magic and to Elites. Okay. Grab Superiority for bonus damage to crowd controlled enemies plus a little bit of life. I like to grab the bonus nodes, the rare nodes, uh, sorry, the magic nodes around these because I like the plus life. I like the plus damage. But you could take off some of these, maybe the plus life if you feel like it was in your way. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, get the magic nodes around Devastation. Bonus nature, magic, and damage to elites. Okay. Then we're going to go over and hop into the poison board. I forget the name, the toxicity board or whatever. But you want to hop in here. Make sure that the uh, glyph socket is in the bottom left-hand corner. You're going to go ahead and max that out right away and get all the rare nodes around it. Sinking fangs. Okay. Um, nature born. This is going to increase your, your survivability. It's going to reduce the damage from enemies that are poisoned. It's going to dramatically increase your damage to enemies who are poisoned. For the Glyph Socket, <coughs> <coughs> territorial, territorial is really good here. There is a lot of dexterity around that you can grab. I could even grab another one or two dexterity nodes um, if I wanted to spend some points on it. But just working through the build and grabbing two or three available dexterity nodes, I got the 44 dexterity which is 66.2% close damage um, bonus, okay? This is nice. This is, you know, it's a, it's a decent node to put here. But you could put another dexterity node in there, such as the bonus damage to targets who are poisoned, okay? Both of these will be strong here, uh, and they are both dexterity glyphs, all right? Get Toxic Bane, bonus damage to poisons, plus uh, to poison enemies, plus additional poison damage. Okay, get Overturn, bonus damage to poison enemies, plus damage to elites. Go ahead and come up here and get Heightened Malice. When there are three or more poison enemies near you, you deal 45% increased damage. This is one of the best legendary nodes in this build. Okay, and from there, I'm going to go ahead and run into the Earth and Devastation tree afterwards and start maxing that out. Okay, so those are the Paragons, the abilities, and the legendary aspects for this build, folks. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. This is probably the most fun build I've run to date. It is absolutely smoking. It rolls through everything like nobody's business, and it is a ton of fun, okay? So, like and sub. Love you guys a long time. Randy out, baby.